So it sounds cliche, but hair loss is complicated. There are at least 12 diagnoses of hair loss that dermatologists routinely see. And when it comes to treatment, there is no one best treatment. Often multiple therapies yield best results. As a dermatologist who treats hair loss on a regular basis, I want to share with you in today's video the most common causes of hair loss and what are the available and effective options for you to use at home, especially if you can't get in to see a dermatologist immediately. And lastly, discuss red flags and signs that would prompt a more urgent visit to the dermatologist to reduce permanent hair thinning. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy learning about hair care content and ways you can maximize your hair growth, you've come to the right place and I would love it if you can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Before we start, I do want to mention that this video does include a sponsorship with iRestore, an FDA cleared laser hair device that helps to promote hair growth and improve hair thinning. In a bit, I'll be sharing the science behind iRestore, why I use it personally and why I like iRestore over other laser hair devices. Okay, now let's talk about hair loss. Hair loss, also known as alopecia medically, can be categorized into two, scarring and non-scarring. Essentially, the difference between the two is the amount and the severity of inflammation along with clinical findings that can lead to permanent loss of the hair follicles that are replaced by a scar. So essentially, in scarring hair loss, which are two medical conditions of the scalp, it's really best managed by medical interventions to really reduce the risk of permanent hair loss. Now, the good news is that majority and the most common types of hair loss are non-scarring, which is what I'm gonna be focusing on for the majority of the video today. And also because there are effective and available options for you to use at home if you are experiencing non-scarring alopecia. Antigenetic hair loss, also known as male and female pattern hair loss, is the most common cause of hair thinning. It can affect 40 to 50% of men and women. There is a genetic predisposition. Often you can see a run in families, which makes one's hair follicle more sensitive to androgen hormones, in particular dihydrotestosterone, which this hormone, what it does is it causes the hair follicles to produce less hair and smaller hair over time. We call that miniaturization, leading to thinning. Now the hair follicles are particularly sensitive to this hormone. For men, it's the frontal and the side so the bitemporal scalp as well as the top of the head. For women, it's most commonly the top of the head. This is why when you see men who go bald, who don't have hair on top, they often will still have preserved hair in the back of the head. And that is for some reason, those hair follicles are not as hormonally sensitive. Often individuals will start noticing in their 20s and 30s. And often will report, you know, mom and dad having hair thinning and starting around the similar age. Now, androgenetic hair loss is a aggressive type of hair loss, meaning we don't have a cure for it. We have great treatments for it, but there is no cure. And that also means effective treatments is really more chronic long-term. At any point, if one chooses to stop the treatment, their hair will kind of reverse back to the natural state and then out over time again. The next most common cause of hair loss is called telogen effluvium, also coined as stress-related hair loss. And how I like to explain it as, think of hair as an accessory, in the sense for our body to survive, hair is not necessary. So when our body's under stress, it puts less energy into growing hair. Now, the stress is a big umbrella term and it can be lots of different things for different individuals. Recent surgery, recent illnesses, medications, severe weight loss, nutritional vitamin deficiency, to just even emotional stress going through loss of a loved one, divorce, medical school, and postpartum, which is what I am currently experiencing. Because your body's under stress, it's gonna put less energy into growing hair, so more hair is shifted into the resting or telogen phase, which then will shed. Now, often because the stress is temporary, your body, once it recovers, will start to regrow grow hair again. But that process, depending on the underlying stressor, can often take a lot of time and commonly can take nine months, if not longer, for your hair to fully recover. And in a small subset of individuals, they don't 
ever fully recover, that is because telogen fluvium can bring out androgenetic hair loss in those individuals who have that genetic predisposition. Now, unlike androgenetic hair loss, in general, when individuals are experiencing telogen fluvium, they experience diffuse thinning where hair are just coming out in clumps in the shower. It's all over the you know bathroom floor or like say for individuals where have longer hair, they would notice their ponytail density being less full. Versus in androgenic hair loss, there is a particular pattern to the thinning. Now, the good news is whether it's androgenic hair loss or telogen fluvium, what is available to you over the counter that you can try if you're not able to see your dermatologist are very similar. And in general, when it comes to promoting and supporting hair growth, we have only a finite available treatments and tools at our disposal. And all of these can really work well together. So let's Let's talk about them. So the first treatment to consider if you are experiencing pattern hair loss or telogen effluvium is topical minoxidil, also known by its brand name Rogaine. Minoxidil is by far the most effective topical treatment you can apply to your scalp that has shown to be helpful in promoting hair growth and is certainly something that dermatologists recommend most patients to try. We think minoxidil works by dilating the blood vessels and improving blood flow and nutrients to the scalp. In addition, it has been shown to shift more hair into the antigen or growing phase of the hair cycle. Now, over the counter, what's available is two and 5% concentration as well as solution and foam. Regardless of your gender, go with the 5%, go with the stronger concentration because we know that works better than the two. It can take a little trial and error to figure out whether the solution versus the foam will work better for you. And sometimes it's more of a personal preference. I personally recommend the 5% foam because it's easier to apply and use. And also it tends to be less irritating irritating on the scalp compared to the solution. But regardless, go with the 5% concentration. Now, like most hair loss treatments, it does take time. I encourage anyone when they start minoxidil to give it at least three to six months of consistent use. For minoxidil, there can be this scary initial shedding phase that individuals experience. And that has to do with how minoxidil works in synchronizing the hair into the growing phase and therefore causes a little more shedding. But understand that if you continue Continue, it will get better. Now, there are a subset of individuals who really don't respond to minoxidil. In fact, we know that minoxidil really only works in about 40% of individuals. That is because minoxidil needs to be converted to the active form for it to work. And that enzyme that converts minoxidil in the hair follicles actually varies in activity based on genetics. So it is certainly possible that minoxidil may give you suboptimal response or it may not work at all for you. And if you don't, then the next treatment that I recommend trying is low level laser therapy. Low level laser therapy, also known as LL. LT works through a process called photobiomodulation. Essentially, it's utilizing energy from LED light and low-level laser, which are then absorbed by the cells in the hair follicles, giving them energy and thereby promoting them and pushing them into the growing phase. And there's quite a bit of scientific evidence demonstrating LLLT to be effective in promoting hair growth, especially when it comes to causes like androgenic hair loss and telogen effluvium. The best part of low-level laser therapy is that it can work along Alongside other treatments, often results are even better when it's combined with other treatments like topical minoxidil, oral treatments, prescription medications, and procedures. And in fact, in someone who is not having the optimal desired results with minoxidil alone, LLLT is something I will frequently recommend to my patients. Now, there are a lot of laser hair devices on the market, and why I personally recommend and use iRestore are the following: it contains 282 laser and LED lights, and really the only device on the market that contains both laser and LED lights. This is helpful because laser can penetrate deeper into the hair follicles while the LED lights offer a broader range of coverage. So in the sense you're getting depth and breadth to really optimize and maximize hair growth potential. This device is FDA cleared and has been demonstrated in clinical studies to be effective. Personally, I love how easy this device is for use in the sense you only have to wear it for 25 minutes, three times a week. I have the pro device and I love this one because it offers really broad coverage to not only help to improve hair density, but also maintain the health of your hair that is grown with this device. I have been using the Iris Laser Hair device for the past six months to 
help with my postpartum hair thinning. I definitely feel like this device, along with how I've been caring for my hair, are the two main reasons why in this pregnancy, postpartum, I have been experiencing far less hair shedding compared to my last pregnancy five years ago. And you can definitely start to see my postpartum bangs if you will coming through obviously most noticeable in the front and definitely there are days where i have to literally use hairspray to really tame them and keep them down otherwise they would be sticking straight up you have to plug this device into the outlet for it to work but you can also buy a portable battery pack that allows you to move around and this cap is so easy to use i just put it on my head and i can do something else allow me to multitask at the same time versus there are other devices on the market that you literally have to hold with your hand now do keep in mind when it comes to laser hair devices you do have to use it for three to six months sometimes even longer for visible results and that's another thing i really like about iRestore is they offer a 12 month money back guarantee to give you ample time to use and try out the device to see if it's an effective treatment. Right now, iRestore is having an amazing sale on all their devices. Do check out more in the links below. And for a limited time, you can save $400 on this pro device by using the code Dr. Jenny. Now, aside from using devices and treatments to promote hair growth, one thing we absolutely need to make sure of is keeping our scalp healthy and maximizing that healthy environment to promote hair growth. What we mean is that we know oxidative stress contributes to hair loss regardless of the underlying cause. And what I typically tell my patients, whether it's androgenetic hair loss or telogen and fluvium, or even one of those medical conditions that can cause hair thinning is to use an anti-dandruff shampoo. Reasons being is that in clinical studies, we know that anti-dandruff shampoo, in particular, zinc pyrithione and ketoconazole or nizerol has been shown to reduce yeast and sebum oxidation, both of which contributes to inflammation that can add on to hair thinning. So certainly if you have itchy, flaky scalp and dandruff, make sure first and foremost that that is under control first before you start applying roguing or using laser hair devices. But even if you don't have dandruff and you don't have scalp itching or flaking, incorporating a zinc pyrithione or nizerol shampoo two to three times a week can be very helpful adjunct and that is what I recommend doing. And certainly make sure that you don't go too long between hair washing. You certainly don't want that grease and that sebum to build up because that over time does contribute again to inflammation that can add on or compound hair thinning. And lastly, if you're not getting the desired outcome or you're not improving at all with those home treatments I mentioned earlier, please see a dermatologist. Prescription medications like finasteride, oral minoxidil, and spironolactone can be very helpful and in some cases even more beneficial than home remedies and certainly can work together in conjunction with the home remedies to really give you the best outcome that you are looking for. Okay, now moving on. Alopecia areata is a type of hair loss that I more commonly see in kids, but also can see in adults. And it's a type of hair loss that we call autoimmune, meaning your body's immune system for some reason is attacking your hair follicles and thereby causing hair loss. It can occur out of the blue, but for most people, there tends to be a genetic tendency. And certainly individuals that have an underlying autoimmune condition to begin with are at higher risk of developing alopecia areata. And the conditions that we commonly see in association with alopecia areata are type 1 diabetes, thyroid disease, as well as vitiligo, a condition that causes one to lose skin color. Now, alopecia areata itself is not dangerous, but certainly it can be very distressing. Often it will present a circular patches of hair loss, most commonly affecting the scalp, but really it can affect any hair bearing area, like the eyebrows, the eyelashes, as well as body hair. So alopecia areata for the most part is really gonna be best managed with prescription treatments, topical therapy, as well as in-office intralesional Kenalog injections that are done serially about a month apart to really help shut down the inflammation to allow your body to grow hair. And we sometimes will even add topical minoxidil to promote the hair growth while they're undergoing the medical treatment. And sometimes your body will even start to regrow hair on its own. It's not uncommon for me to see an individual who comes in with hair thinning and when I examine them, they're already starting to grow hair back. A lot of times, when the hair does grow back, it often is finer and often gray in color because the melanocytes are often destroyed in that inflammatory process. But over time, that hair will repigment. Now, because of that genetic predisposition, alopecia areata, once that individual starts noticing it, can occur throughout that individual's lifetime. And it can be hard to predict the clinical course for the average individual that have just the common patches of hair loss here and there. What I mean by that is, you know, when we see a patch, we treat it, that may resolve 
but that individual is definitely at higher risk of developing other patches of hair loss over the course of time. And that time frame is hard to predict. It could occur a few weeks later, a few months later, or even a few years later. So for individuals that have that predisposition to getting alopecia areata, we just recommend the individual to really monitor their hair for any patches that would occur and then have those treated readily when it does happen. Now the last hair loss I want to talk about is called traction hair loss. And this is basically chronic tension put on the scalp from certain hairstyles that over time can damage the hair follicles that can lead to thinning. Often the hairstyles are you know tight ponytails, braids, cornrows, as well as hair extensions. Anything that really puts tension at the root over time. And what we would see on exam commonly is that it will occur as thinning like a receding hairline as well as bitemporal hairline. Now with traction hair loss the most important thing is stopping those tight hairdos and being able to find hairstyles and ways of wearing your hair that will put less tension on the scalp. Medical treatments often would involve topical steroids and sometimes even similar injections to help reduce the subclinical inflammation that occurs from the chronic tension. Again, minoxidil has been shown to help again promote hair growth and certainly LLLT could be helpful. But the most important thing is making those lifestyle hairstyling habits because one thing with traction is that in the beginning it is temporary but when traction is put on your scalp over time over years it can lead to permanent hair loss so changing up your hairstyle makes all the difference in the world now before we end this video i just briefly want to talk about scarring hair loss these include a lot of medical conditions like lichen planum pilaris lupus dissecting cellulitis of the scalp folliculites decalvans and and many more usually in these conditions there is intense underlying inflammation as well as clinical findings that we see often individuals will feel that their scalp feels boggy and painful there can be intense itching burning flaking along with redness of the scalp there may even be a lot of pustules or acne like lesions that could occur and sometimes there could even be a lot of bumps or even keloid scars that would develop concurrently. If you are experiencing any of those symptoms, please, please, please see a dermatologist as soon as you can because medical intervention is really gonna be key in preventing permanent hair thinning. And on the same line, if you're not getting the desired outcome with home treatments, see a dermatologist is really essential because as we mentioned earlier, identifying underlying triggers. For a lot of individuals, I often will catch vitamin D deficiency, zinc deficiency, anemia that can also contribute. And if those are not properly addressed, you are not optimizing hair growth. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found this video to be informative and helpful and certainly help you understand the common causes of hair loss and what therapies are available to you at home if you are not able to see a dermatologist immediately. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.